as I told our creative team that we were doing the story, they wrote up a promo and said, you know, the latest fad, and I said, stop, not a fad. You're talking about a paradigm shift in the way we look at how we consume food. This is here to stay. This is not, and no disrespect to any diet, so I won't mention any by names, it's not a fad. This is a realization that we're taking poison into our bodies. Well, well said, Ted, because that's exactly right. It's like calling genetically modified corn the recognition that's got some uncertainties about it, like glyphosate resistant corn, calling that a fad. It's not a fad. It's, a, it's necessary now for you and me to no longer just talk about, for nutrition, protein, calories, fats, and those kinds of things. We need to also be aware of what agribusiness has been doing to our food. So if we're going to talk about corn, we've got to talk now about glyphosate-resistant corn and other forms of genetically modified corn. If we talk about wheat, we've got to talk about what agribusiness did 30 or 40 years ago to increase yield and generate all these inadvertent changes in the crop. Again, well-intentioned. Well-intentioned, yes. Okay. You've made the sale scientifically, so now I'm on board. But I'd say to you, doctor, I live in Milwaukee. I love my beer. I love my fish fries. I love my bread. I love my pizza. It's one thing to say, take the wheat out of your diet. It's Girl Scout cookie time, doctor. <laughs> Do you know how many Thin Mints I've had to give away at work because the number one ingredient is wheat? I'm trying here. I'm on board. I'm a disciple. But it's hard to do. How do we do it? And you mentioned in your book. You have to radically transform. You have to go through your cupboards. I did that last week, by the way. It was very sad to throw out all my Raisin Bran and to throw out all my Wheaties and to throw out all my Golden Grams. I love all those things. But you have to do it. How do we make that transformation? That's what people want to know. It, some very simple rules to follow. One is we're going to return to real single ingredient foods that we know don't have wheat because you, you, you already seen that if you say I'm going to eliminate wheat from my diet, you can eliminate the obvious sources like breads, rolls, and pasta, but there are many not so obvious sources like Twizzlers, second ingredient, Campbell's tomato soup, Lipton instant soup, uh, virtually all frozen foods and all breakfast cereals, salad dressings. In fact, you're going to go up and down the supermarket aisles and say, you know what, I can barely find any processed food that does not have wheat in it. By the way, that's a question all of its own. Why is it there? Is it there for appetite stimulation? Now we get more, now, now that's we right. more cynical, do we That's not? right. But, so we have to get rid of all those processed food or most processed foods. So we're going to return to the safety of single, of real single ingredient foods. So we know, for instance, that lamb chops don't have wheat. We know that cucumbers and tomatoes and lettuce don't have wheat. So we're going to return to real single ingredient foods. And by the way, a corollary to uh, rejecting the whole notion of more healthy whole grains is to reject the notion of cutting our fat and saturated fat, which by the way is yet another big mistake made in nutrition. So we're going to eat chicken. We're going to have the skin and the dark meat, I'm going to boil the bones for soup. I'm not going to skim off that fat, I'm going to have it. So we're going to eat real single ingredient foods. Now, you make an excellent point. Well, this is a real world. We have children, we have entertaining, we have company on, on, on Friday, we have a Packer game on Sunday. How can I serve cheesecake, muffins, cookies, pizza, and those kinds of fun things, minus wheat and other unhealthy ingredients, and by the, and by the way, minus all the gluten-free ingredients too. That's a whole other mistake. We can recreate all those fun things. You can have delicious muffins and cookies, but we're going to do it using logical, rational rules in nutrition. We're going to use healthy ingredients, and you know, you can make a delicious Reuben sandwich. You can make a delicious cheesecake and a plate full of chocolate chip cookies. At present, you and I have to make it ourselves or ask someone to do it for us because we can't buy these things. The food industry is only beginning to catch on. They call me. So I know this for a fact that they're going to try to develop these things. If there's a market, they're going to try to serve it. But right now, you and I have to make it ourselves. Well, we do see products that are gluten-free. Stores have gluten-free aisles, gluten-free uh, counters. We're trying. I'm now buying Rice Krispies that are gluten-free. Am I still failing? You wince. Uh, so we don't want to replace a problem, wheat, and thereby the gluten protein in wheat, with another problem, in this case, the processed food industry has stepped to the fore and said, we're going to use cornstarch, rice starch, tapioca starch, or potato starch. So dried pulverized starches, Ted, when you dry them, pulverize them down to that fine uh, a granular form, you increase the surface area for digestion of the starch exponentially. You get sky-high blood sugars sufficient to add to risk for hypertension, heart disease, 
um, diabetes, visceral fat accumulation, dementia, and cancer. So we don't want to take back a problem. To where, back to where you started. So we're back to almost, almost as bad as wheat minus some of the other components. So that's why I say the gluten-free uh, solution is not a solution, it's a mistake. So the recipes I have, the way I craft food, is indeed gluten-free, but we're not going to use junk carbohydrate replacement ingredients.